guys and welcome to the high tea and happy hour channel if you are not subscribed please hit subscribe like and share these videos for to get me more exposure and yeah i'm about to get painting all right so i'm excited about this project today because i'm finally being able to start an installation of a space and see it completely through within like the next couple of weeks um, so I'm starting with my dining area and I'm excited because I don't know if I've said this before on any other videos, but I haven't been able to really finish a space yet. I just been busy. So I've been kind of like hopping around on projects and filling in things when I can. So I haven't been able to really, you know, paint, decorate, and just really finish a space and then move on. So I'm excited because I'm going to be able to do that with my dining room or a dining area, except it's not enclosed in walls, which will make it a room, but it's not a room. It's an area adjacent to my living space and my kitchen, right next door to my kitchen. Um, so my dining area right now, I'll throw the video up. My dining area right now is just banquet, table, two chairs, vase with some pompous, um, so not much going on, no paint. Um, I had a, little, a couple of scuffs on the wall from when I would decorate for parties and happy hours and things like that with the double-sided tape, um, which I just went ahead and took a hair dryer to kind of dry out or help the double-sided tape, the sticky tape, release from the wall. Um, and then just kind of went back in with a knife, but I wasn't that gentle, so it was a couple of scuffs. But I also wasn't that gentle because I knew I was painting, so. And the paint style that I'm using today has texture, so anything that would be behind the wall that might have a little bit of texture, but not behind the wall, behind the paint that might have a little bit of texture will, you know, kind of blend into the style. But yeah, so I decided to go with like a, kind of a vintage feel because my table kind of has kind of a vintage feel. It could be played up that way. My bank deck can be played up that way, although um no yes my bank had a stain i might replace my two chairs because it's a little too matchy matchy for me right now and i think i want to bring in another texture maybe emphasize some other colors with the chairs so i'm still deciding on that but for right now they will be staying um for the wall the project i'm gonna show you today because i'm just gonna start today and then i'll follow up with another video about the installation of the furniture um, I have a pendant that I'm going to put in that's really cute. It's, you know, natural looking. It fits into the theme. Um, but for today, I am working on my wall. So I'm going to lime wash my wall. And basically what lime washing is, it gives it kind of a, that aged vintage look. Um, I kind of describe it as like the coloration of an old newspaper. It starts to be like acidized and turn tannish and those kind of undertones of yellow and things like that. Um, but my wall, my colors I chose are, you know, very similar, like I said, that age vintage scheme here. Um, my colors. Also, I know y'all noticed this whole by now. I'm in my painter's clothes, so you gotta wear your you know, your rags when you're painting, nothing that you really care about. So this already has a hole in it. My pants has holes in it. So I'm in my rags for my paint. Um, but yeah, so this color is called Macadamia Nuts. And the other one is Cinnamon Roll. And I picked two colors within the same family. So it looks like, you know, a natural aging of the wall and color and paint and things like that. So yeah. I'm excited and I also was excited because the colors are both like foods so I'm like oh the paint knows me I decided to go with a Valspar paint a signature interior paint did a satin finish um don't want it to be glossy um you know if you think about how things age they don't age and become glossy they age and become more matte or you know naturally like a wall or those things aging so I use the Valspar set and, um, you know, it's Green Guard 
gold certified, all of those good things. Fade resistant, excellent stain resistance, smooth, high hiding coverage as they are saying and trying to sell to us. But yeah, this is what I'm using on the wall and use as those paint bases, as you can see. Um, for my paintbrush, let me backtrack for a second. So this is the first time I'm doing a project like this, either for myself or for a client. I have not done a line wash yet or installed one yet. Um, honestly, as far as paint jobs, it just depends on the extent. But um, usually I go with a contractor. I have a contractor come in for my clients and paint. Or if it's something small, I might just knock it out myself just to save the client a couple dollars. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I have not done this yet. So I did a lot of research over the last couple of weeks. And I kind of already knew the technique just because I am an artist. Um, you know, I'm just all these things. <laughs> just love myself. I am an artist by passion. I've always loved art. I've always painted. Um, even as a kid, I still paint when I have time. I'm a designer too. So that also, you know, I could use that passion a lot. So when I was looking at what I wanted to do with this wall, I was like, oh, a line wash would be dope because I want this space to feel warmer. I want it to have like a vintage touch. Um, and I wanted to have some type of texture without it being overpowering. Initially, I was thinking about painting like kind of a mural type thing with some vines and things like that on top of the line wash. But I was like, you know, I think the line wash will do the trick, especially because I'm planning to have frames and things on, you know, on the wall. And then there's going to be a large plant that comes up from that side coming this way. So I'm like, I think that just the line wash would do. So in my research, I found that, you know, the technique that I thought would use, you know, just kind of swiping like this works. So I was like, oh, that's easy. I'm definitely going to do that. Looked it up and then saw that I need a wide paintbrush to achieve it. Put it this way so you can read it. A wide paintbrush to achieve that texture and pattern. So I have my five inch brush. It's soft. It'll be good for blending colors because like I said, I have two colors that I have going. Um, you can use contrasting colors, different colors, like a, a color that I consider for a second, because I'm like, ooh, maybe I could bring in some darker hues of blue into the wall to really add that like dark shadow in. But I just decided that I wanted to look, you know, more natural, like a natural um, aging of the wall. Um, but yeah, you can do this for, with pinks, pink and yellow, make it look, you know, like a burst of sunshine and the pink hues and things like that. Like it's so many different ways that you can combine these colors to get that effect um, of line washing. But I'm about to get started. I have, I was from a dollar store a while ago and I realized I didn't buy any paint trays. I'm like, oh, what can I use? One dollar each. No, well, actually, these might have been one twenty-five. Y'all know how the dollar store went up. What was that about? What was that even about? But yeah, I think I'm gonna start with the darker color first, and then work the lighter color back in. Um, but yeah, start dark, working lighter, let that dry for about a couple of hours. Come back through the second coat, and then let that dry and see what it's looking like. And if I like it, I like it. If I don't, I'll be touching it up. But I'm excited to see how this goes and get some paint therapy in. I think I'm going to turn on a podcast and then jump right into this. I'll check back in with y'all at the end of all of this. So I'm back and it's the next day and it's completely dried. It was actually dry like four or five hours after I painted the second set of coats. 
but it's completely tried now. I'm so heck with the result. It came out exactly how I thought. Very warm, very vintage texture, like lightly textured. It adds a vibe to the space. Um, it's really like confirming what I wanted to do with this space. Um, as far as, you know, that warm, that vintage vibe, the other colors that I want to add into the space. Some of the colors that I already had in this space, I go perfectly with this vibe. Like the teal, it's like bouncing off of this wall beautifully. Some of the gold accents, like this, you know, welcomes a gaudy, you know, gaudy accent. So like some gaudy gold, not these exactly because I have these planned for somewhere else. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you see how that looks against there? Like, Perfect, right? And these gaudy accents because it's very vintage, it's very aged looking. Um, so I'm very happy with the way that turned out. Um, I can't wait to get my black table and my chairs back into this space. And then I'll be adding in like a display case for like wine glasses and flowers and things like that. I'm doing a double rug in this space. So overall rug and then a throw rug as an accent. Um, and also that throw rug is washable, so it's strategic because it is a dining area. So I can just take that throw rug from this area, throw it in the washing machine, and not have a dirty rug that has food lumped up in it. That would be nasty. So get subscribed if you're not. Stay tuned with this. This is part one. This is line washing the wall. This is part one. Part two will be actually installing the furniture back into this space. I have some picture frames that I want to put in this space. I want my big giant plant to come back into this space. Um, I have a lamp, a pendant that I'm going to, you know, tie into this recessed lighting right here, chain it up, pin it up. Um, so it's gonna be a total vibe. It's, this space is gonna feel connected. This space is gonna feel complete. It's gonna feel warm. It's gonna feel like a space within a space but away from a space. What I mean by that is, it's going to feel connected to the rest of the room because this is an open concept. So living space is adjacent, kitchen space is adjacent. Um, it's gonna feel connected, but it's also gonna have its own energy that when you're in this space and you're at one of my dinner parties or happy hours, that you can feel engulfed in the conversation here, but still be connected to the room, you know? Um, or, you know, even engulfed in this vibe if you're just sitting and not even talking, you're just engulfed in this area of vibe. But I'm excited about this wall. It came out great. I just love it so much. Um, and I can't wait to finish this area. This process was super easy. It was quick too. It's just that kind of swipe in motion as you saw me doing throughout the video, swipe, that swipe. The only thing that really becomes strategic is your second set of coats. So you put your first one in, you know, you're doing it with great intent. You're doing it so that you get that texture, those swipes, and you're blending those colors. Not really blending, but you're interweaving those colors in a way that is creating that line wash look, right? And then on the second coat, the second coat is really that maintenance, that touch up, that, okay, this is what the pattern, this is what I want it to look like. This is how I want these colors to kind of come together or blend, as I said before. Um, so the second coat is more strategic. I did come in with some water to spread the paint out a little bit more to get, you know, fill in some spaces, make sure that the pattern was even going throughout, but also not totally covering up the white that's underneath it. So that white can also bring through some pattern and texture and, you know, make it look, you know, vintage aged. So I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Um, but yeah, stay with me and I'll show y'all part two of the install and I'll see y'all later. Thanks. Look at how beautiful that teal is with this wall. Like, come on. So pretty.